Despite being one of the wealthiest countries in Africa, South Africa still has one of the lowest ranking education systems on the continent. But new education practices may be able to turn this around. Now, when we look at the times we live in, information is exploding. Therefore, we need to have the skills to be able to absorb that information, filter through that, and distinguish for ourselves what's relevant and what's not. The, the most uh, fundamental form of learning for any human being is imitative learning. If we just, you see over there, is that if you look at them very, very carefully, long faces, and okay, it's when they do a trance dance, they want to go into the heavens, they want to get the spirit moved from one place. And therefore, whenever we want to teach something, we need to embody that ourselves first. We need to set the standard, we need to set the example first, before we can expect others to uh, follow our example. However, are these practices actually implemented in the South African school system? We have all this information available uh, of how the brain learns and yet our educational system is not accommodating that for various reasons but it is not accommodating that. We are still using yesterday's infrastructure and sciences and technology for tomorrow's people. Our educational system is not grounded into the latest neuroscience practices and we have not aligned the environment and those practices of education with what science already tells us about how the human mind works and learns and thinks. And that is the challenge. It doesn't help us to know all of this if we are not putting this into practice, creating humanized environments in which learners can learn easier and faster and be more flexible. What then is the next step for the South African education system? So that is our challenge is for uh, us to align uh, the educational systems of the world with what latest research tell us. Creativity is going to be one of the most desired skills for the workplace of the future. Yet so many times our systems still inhibit people's uh, innovative thinking and creativity as such. So that is why it's so important that every learner has to at least take responsibility for themselves because the system as such is not going to always be adequate enough to assist you in, uh, with a learning environment that's conducive for learning. Shelley Root, an Isikosa teacher at Diocesan School for Girls in Grahamstown, explains that modernizing classrooms and keeping teachers up to date with the latest technology is no simple task and that there are other factors to consider that are out of the teacher's control. I think in terms of education, structures and stuff haven't changed much. Possibly because in a lot of time they do work. You know, you do need a classroom, you need the way classrooms are laid out. But we do obviously have a little bit more access to finances, whereas some schools aren't necessarily financially able to do what they would like to do to modernize their teaching. So they're still stuck in the old teacher standing up there, making them copy down notes from the board because they're not enough textbooks or whatever. We move beyond that. So I feel that um, in terms of my school, we are really are encouraged to be as creative as we can, simply because we, we're able to.